Hi, we're going to see today how I mixed the colors for the painting. So here you can see that finished painting and the range of colors from the sunlit fields to the ditch in the foreground and the trees in the distant background. And here is our final palette with a range of purples to dark green, light green, the pink, yellow, and gray from the middle ground, and our sky colors at the top. So to get started in mixing these colors, you want to get your palette set up. And I have at the top the colors that we were shooting for to mix. On the side, you'll see I already have Indian yellow, Fanchon red, or the Naphthol red, and um, Carl's Crimson, also called Alizarin Crimson or Naphthol Crimson, laid out. And next, I'm going to squeeze out some ultramarine blue and then some phthalo blue. And I'm putting those up towards the top of the palette in the same positions that I usually place them. Um, as somebody has commented on the Q&A, um, yeah, I do put my colors in the same basic positions each time. That means that I can mix colors without having to overthink it. I kind of know where they're going to be. So we've got those laid out. I'm going to squeeze out a little bit more Indian yellow and some more of the reds. We're going to get the a little bit more of the Fanchon and a little bit more of the Carl's Crimson. Remember, those are just the Williamsburg color names for those colors. Our second yellow, yellow ochre. And there we have our double split primaries. We're going to use white to create the sky. And remember, when you start to create mixtures, you want to work with the light colors down as the base and mix the darker colors into them. So as we move towards mixing the colors for the sky, I'm going to squeeze out three different separate sections of white. One for the top of the sky, one for the middle area, and one for the area that's closest to the horizon line. So there we have three dabs of white, and those are about quarter size. That's a big tube of white that you see right there, not a small tube. So about a quarter size dab of white. The two areas of white below are going to be for the gray, the lavender gray areas for the road and the foreground shadow areas. And then I want to have some white set out just in case I need it for mixing some other colors. So to start, that first area of white for the sky is going to have ultramarine blue in it, all by itself. Very little of anything else to begin with. Straight ultramarine blue. This time of year in the fall, the sky has a lot of ultramarine blue in it and not as much thalo. So the very beginning I'm going to mix up that ultramarine blue, adjusting as I go to get the value, the correct value. And before I dip that knife back into the ultramarine, notice I'm wiping every time. And that's that plow and push that I've talked about before with the flat knife. You want to push it forward and then pull it back, push it down. I took some of what was still left on the knife and put it into the middle section of white, which is going to be white with some ultramarine blue and some phthalo blue. And I want you to notice how very, very little phthalo blue is on that knife. It doesn't take much at all to affect the color. And the idea here is to give a transition between the ultramarine blue to the left and what is going to be mainly phthalo blue to the right. 
So it's having those three different values and three different temperatures um, for each color that we've talked about so much. The last blue that I'm mixing is thalo blue and white. It's going to be much lighter. It's the lightest blue. And once I have that mixed up, I'm going to add a tiny, tiny little bit of Indian yellow. Very, very tiny. Again, almost minuscule. You can almost not see it. And that is going to make a slightly more green blue. So that's the blue for the area closest to the horizon line. And there we have our blues. Next up, we are going to go to our darkest darks. And we're going to mix a color that is partially purple and partially green. So in order to do that, to begin with, I'm going to mix a green, ultramarine blue, and yellow ochre. Adding the ultramarine blue slowly to the yellow ochre. I'm trying to mix a color that is the equivalent of the terra verde, the Italian terra verde that Williamsburg makes. Because I want to make a dark green. This one is still a bit too warm, so you're going to see me put some phthalo blue in there in just a second. Because remember, ultramarine blue is a warm blue, so any greens mixed from that are going to be a lot warmer than if they're mixed with phthalo blue, which is much cooler. Now I've added some phthalo blue to that. You can see it's immediately beginning to cool down some. It's going to be a nice darker blue fairly earthy blue. Now the next thing I want to do with that, I'm going to split some in half because that's about the right value for me to use for several other things too. So I want to pull some of that off and I'm going to add some magenta to that. The reason I split it is I want you to see there are two different ways to create that dark mixture of purple and green. One is to take the green I made and add magenta to it and then some more ultramarine blue until it begins to get to be approximately the the kind of dark purple color that I'm shooting for. I have mixed that so many times that it's easy for me to go that direction and go straight from the magenta. What the magenta does is it's a Think of it as a red violet. So when you mix a red violet in with the green, those are close complements, so they're going to cancel each other out to a degree. So it'll still be a rich color, but it is dulling the color down as well as darkening it a bit. So here I'm going to add a little bit more ultramarine blue to that dark purple mixture and a little more of the um, naphthol crimson or the crimson color. It's a little um, not quite as dark yet as I want it to get. So to make it darker, to make it richer and darker, I'm going to add more of that crimson to it so that it becomes an even deeper, even richer color. So you can adjust those colors to push them as dark as you want or as warm or cool as you want by gradually adding those other main parts or other double primaries to the mixtures that you've made. Be sure to mix your colors thoroughly so that you don't have little bits and pieces of other colors popping up in there. Now, um, an alternative way, instead of doing it little bit by little bit like that, is to mix the violet first. So instead of mixing it separately, adding blue and then adding magenta, you can make a violet first from the beginning, which is what I'm doing here. I've mixed ultramarine blue and the um, magenta crimson color. 
and I'm going to then, after it makes a nice purple, a little bit more ultramarine blue in there, I am going to mix that in with that other half of the green that I pulled out. I told you I wanted to mix it two different ways, and these are the two different ways that I wanted to show you that you get to the same end result. It's just if you're not sure about mixing to begin with, it's a little bit easier if you mix the violet, mix the green, and then mix the two together. So here I have the two separate, and in just a second you're going to see me mix some of that violet in with the green. Doesn't take much at all before it starts to turn the green to a really nice, rich, almost black color. And there you have it. Two different ways to get to the same end. Next, we're going to work on developing some of those other colors that we're going to be using in the painting. So we're going to move to those luscious grays in the background. So next we're going to mix the rest of our greens. We're going to start with some more yellow ochre and going to add in some ultramarine blue almost the same base mixture that I mixed before. Notice how warm it is when you first initially make that mixture because of all the... you're mixing in that warmer blue with the yellow. I'll blue it up a little bit more. So the blue both cools it and darkens it at the same time. And we'll come to something that's a middle green value and color. Add a little thalo to it. Green it up a little bit more. Cool it down a little bit more. And this will be a green that is darker, but not quite as dark as the purpley green color. Next, we're going to make a green that goes just a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer. I'm going to move this up here so that you can see it. So I'm trying to make something that's a little bit purer as well. So I'm taking phthalo blue and putting it straight into the yellow ochre. And what you're, I'm doing each time I pull the knife off camera is I am mixing it up, wiping it off, so that um, when, as I dip it into the next pile of color, it's not getting all messed up. Here with our lighter greens, we have a warmer one and a cooler one. And the lightest one is going to be the warmest one. You saw I just added some Indian yellow to it, which warms it up considerably. Grab a little bit more.
So there we have our greens. The dark, dark purpley green that is the no tan color, the dark green, the middle green, and the light green. Moving from there, I'm going to mix the colors for the field. And the main color in the field is white with a little bit of the Fanchon red, which is the same thing as the Naphthol red. So I'm making a really rich pink color. And I'm going to add some Indian yellow to that so that it takes off some of the reddish tint. It becomes more of a red-orange tint instead of a pink tint. And I'll need to adjust that just a little bit to get it to the degree of orange that we're looking for there. A little bit more Indian yellow. And then let some of the paint that's on the knife tint that next pile of white because I'm going to mix one that is a little lighter. It's going to be the one that is almost pure yellow. So I want it to have a little bit of that pink in there so it will relate to the first one. I'm going to take some of that and use it to lighten up that first one as well. And then get some Indian yellow and warm up the lightest part of that pink triad. Try to do it without getting the green that I slimed into the yellow. That's one of those do as I say do, not as I actually do. Wipe your knife off in between. So the yellow goes in there and it greatly intensifies it. That's what I mean by Indian yellow being a really strong tinting strength. Really strong tinting color. And once we get that mixed up, then we're going to be mixing a duller version of that as well so that we can have that alternation between really warm and really cool going on in the field as well. So I'm going to take some of that pink and what's the complement of orange and it is blue. So I'm going to take a little bit of the blue from the sky and use it to dull down the pinkish orange. And there we get a more muted, almost lavender color that becomes a really great foil for the red-orange light tint there and the yellow-orange to the right. So that middle color is red-orange that has been mixed with white. So you have the Fanchon red or the Naphthol red, a little bit of Indian yellow mixed with white, and you get that middle one. The one next to it is Indian yellow and white with a little tiny bit of the rose mixture. And then we have that dulled out color that's made from the kind of coral rose red orange color and its complement blue. So now I'm taking some of my lavender and green, purple and green mixture, adding a little white to it because I want to mix those purples muted purples that we have in the foreground and in the distant road. Once I get a basic purple violet mixed up, then I can adjust its temperature and its intensity as well as the value. 
And again, to dull it out, I'm going to mix it with its complement. The complement of violet is yellow. You will get much, much better um, neutrals if you mix complements than if you dull the colors by adding black or white. And if I want that color to be a little cooler or a little warmer, depending on what color it's going to be sitting next to, I can add some blue or I can add some um, of the, the pink color. So I'm going to take some of that blue, add in some of what I just made, and a little purple. This is going to be a little bit more intense than that first one. Add a little bit of the red orange mixture. So now we have a cool lavender. It's got a little bit more blue than it does red. Next to a warm lavender that is almost moving into the dull red stage. So notice that they're close, but they're just enough difference in temperature to make them visually interesting. If you need to push them further apart, add a little bit more of that blue back into it. And there we have it. This is our palette for the painting. And here's the finished painting. So I hope that was helpful. Happy painting.